So you're going up for a job interview and they ask you to present a portfolio. Which would you rather present? This boring standard dashboard that everyone else does or this bad boy? I think we both know the answer. So let me show you how I built it. Hello and welcome back again to another video and I'm really excited to show this one because I've actually been asked this a few times probably in the last month or two months of how do you build a portfolio for a job interview or something like that and the thing that I and I've done this myself where I had to present a portfolio and I've learned a few things which is less is more you've got to remember that when you're working on a particular project in your previous job day in day out for months and months and months you know all the intricacies and all the tiny little details so if you present it you only have like five minutes so you want to be very quick when it comes to here's why we're doing it here's why it's important and this is what we analyze so very 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 simple stuff so you don't want to overload it as you can see from this one you have kind of the standard dashboard so i guess first we'll start by picking at this so the things that i hate right off the bat is your title and i've got the wrong tool give me one second yeah so right off the bat the worst part is the title is so generic you're not really setting a tone for the dashboard secondly when it comes to kind of they're called i guess metrics or headline metrics i don't suggest them in a job interview simply because well you, you can only say a few things and if you put headline metrics in there the audience or whoever's interviewing you is going to try and read them now if it doesn't add to the story for what you're trying to say in those five minutes get rid of it it's useless so it's only whatever adds to the story so that you can make a point in like three or four minutes five minutes something like that okay so that's the first part the next part is when i look at this part down here so everything below this line i'm trying to understand like where am i looking if you can see everything's kind of like a flat color right so nothing jumps out because the color scheme that i've chosen here 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 and here is exactly the same so there's i don't know what it's exactly called in data visualization but your eyes will compete not your eyes the visualization will compete for attention from you so some things that stand out more we notice and the ones that we don't they fade into the background right so that is done by either orientation or sizing or color primarily color is a big one so we need to be able to use the color to our advantage or the sizing to tell a very simple story so i'll leave it there for that one and what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a look at the other one i built which is this one right here and you can see that there is way less happening and i've actually removed so much in this and maybe if i move my face slightly i'll let you see what's kind of here in the corner maybe here ah look at that that's perfect so as you can see here, there's only like three or four things on this dashboard, and that's really what you want to stick to, just a few things. And you want to layer it in a way that whoever's looking at it will look at the things that stand out first that will set the context for the next things they look at. For example, this, the title, oh, I used the wrong one again, the title stands out. This bit stands out. This red stands out. This one maybe a little bit strong right and the black a little bit strong but it's not a killer in my opinion the thing is there's only a few things so this title here goes the not so great so you can say well what's wrong with texas okay then down here you go texas texas experienced a profit loss of 8839 you're like well that's terrible and this bar chart kind of in the back is showing you kind of in context compared to all the other states california is and again humans are really good at judging like size that i can't see my finger but this one is probably going to fit four times in california without me knowing right without reading the numbers just because we're really good at looking at that size so it puts into context that texas is making um significantly less than California and it's about a quarter of California's profits if we were to do like absolute comparisons okay so how did I go from the other one to this so let me show you my thinking let's go back to the other one firstly before and then move my face before you kind of start just building and moving things around have a think about um, your dashboard and you probably already have an existing one 
You go, well, what exactly am I trying to say? And don't try and say 30 things. You're just trying to say one thing. That's it. And you want to emphasize that one point. That's all. That is the key to good storytelling. You don't want to be telling too many stories at once. This is not Pulp Fiction, okay? We're not that good. So what, we, what I did was, when I looked at this, I said, well, the headline metrics up here are kind of useless. And actually, you know what? Let me save a copy, and then I can show you the walkthrough. Da, 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 just so I have a copy. So the first thing I did was, well, let me get rid of everything. Okay, let me, let, me, let me do a blank slate. That's probably the better one to do. Oh, hang on. Let's go dashboard. And go, well, what exactly am I trying to say? First, let's set this to like 1550 and 900, which is the one I set just for the sample. Well, when I'm thinking about it, I always think in terms of like drawing, right? So you go, I was going, well, we need a catchy title. So the title is probably going to be roughly there. I want a feature dashboard. So something that takes up like a huge chunk of it. I don't know exactly where it's going to go, but that'll be my feature. That's the first thing they're probably going to gravitate towards. And instead of having heaps of detail, which I'll show you in a second, we want to emphasize just one thing or two things in there that will lead them to the next visualization, which elaborates on that one point. So that's kind of the general formula. So let's start bringing things in. Now, a lot of the times I just do placeholders. So I'm just going to drop a title here. So we're just going to call it title. Let's make it 26. Again, don't overthink this part. Okay. So we have a title around about, let's say there, maybe we'll go center justified, something like that. Now I'm going to go a little bit fast here. I'm not going to show every little detail. If you want to learn a lot of that stuff, please check out my course. It goes through all the basics if you, if you don't know how to do that. Um, so now we have the title and then I want the feature. So the feature we have is this one, profit by state. So if I bring this one in here as a floating, we're going to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so you can see there, it's not sorted. We want to sort it highest to lowest or best to worst. So we're just going to use this tool right here. Okay, so you can see that's brought up all the profit loss to the top and the ones that are profitable to the bottom. Right. And what we want to want to do is emphasize one or the other. OK. And the way we do that is if we go into the legends in here. Now, my go to that I love is the red and black. And the reason I like that is because our eyes are a lot more sensitive to the red than we are to the back uh, to the black. So kind of the black fades into the background. It's still there, but it's the top bit that we notice first. So we go, okay, we don't need the legend. Let's get rid of this. So you notice a lot of the times I'm just get, getting rid of stuff before I really get into it. We'll get rid of the grid lines. Don't need that. Okay. We don't need these um, access rulers and ticks and all that kind of stuff. So just clearing out the stuff we don't need, which is most of it. Okay. Now I can have this in here, but I'm not wanting them to read the value of every single one. I'm just telling them, can you have a look at this one right here? So let's get rid of it. Don't need it. We also don't need to show every single state. We just want to emphasize this one. So what I can do is if I go back to the sheet, if you get rid of state, the whole thing will just compress to a single bar, which we don't want. So you still need state up here. So we want to go here and right click and go show header. And what that does is it actually hides this label Oop. hides this label, but it still lets us kind of divvy it up, right? Divide it, as you can see, all right? So we still get to maintain that. Let's go back to our dashboard. Now, I originally, when I was playing around with this, I said, okay, maybe something like this, and I'll place things kind of here and here. It didn't work out all that well, so I said, okay, what if we went the other way? So I did a transpose, okay, which is this button right here. And I go, that's all right. And I could put the negative here and kind of put a title, maybe a title up here, I was thinking. But for some reason, I just preferred this higher one on the left kind of going down because it kind of goes like over time. It's like getting worse. Okay. Um, so we can reverse this. Uh, which one is it? Like that. You can get rid of the grid lines. 
Okay, so now we're kind of to where we are in the other one. Let's get rid of the title. Okay, um, and then I thought, okay, maybe it is good to have a access. So we'll bring that back. We'll go, All right, that's not too bad. We will just simplify the access itself. So if we go format, and I'm going to change this from like all those zeros to currency, no decimal places, and then thousands. Okay, there we have it. And then when we do the styling, you'll see that that fades even further into the background. All right, so the next thing we want to do is actually call out these states. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do it absolutely perfectly like I did the other one, but I'll just kind of show you roughly how I did it. So if I right click on this one and go annotate, go mark, and we say this state had a profit loss of and go okay All right now let me move my face quickly okay now we had it about there we'll double click and make it a little bit bigger i think i had it like maybe 40 i think i had it 40 something like that all right and then for the styling for this i made it black with see-through now the great thing about see-through is that it kind of it works really well, especially when you have images in the background. Let's make this red. Okay, something like that. Again, I'm not trying to be perfect because I'm just doing place holding. Right now, this one we're gonna put that in there as well. Let's mark that. Made a profit of that. I will give this a slightly different color. And I actually won't make this the same size because it's kind of secondary. I don't want this one to be the focus. We want the bottom one to be the focus. Now we'll make this one black as well. I can't remember the shading. Maybe it's like something like that. Okay. And we'll also give it rounded corners. Maybe more rounded. Eh, very rounded. Okay. Very rounded. All right. So there we have it. So that's kind of like the main feature Think of it like a feature wall in your house, something like that. I'm like, all right, that looks pretty good. And then when I thought about the other, um, what's it called, sheets, I'm like, well, which one is really important? Well, quantity sold, I guess we can show it for a few products, but I, it's not something I can really explain. It doesn't really add value when it comes to the presentation. Same thing goes for sales. We can make this a heat map, but again, I don't think it adds to the situation. So this one is useful because we can say, well, they're already not profitable. Which products are actually leading to that non-profitability or unprofitability, if that's a word. So same thing, let's go highest to lowest. So we can see that this one's kind of uh, the worst. And we're gonna do just a top rank because I don't like sliders in a dashboard. So I'm gonna filter this one by the product name. We're going to go top by field. Now, in the negatives, it's not actually top, it's bottom, right? So bottom goes from the lowest negative value all the way to the top positive value. Now, we're going to do maybe, I think I did seven in the other one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, I did 10. Okay. So here we'll do 10. We'll go apply. And there we have it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's go standard view. Now, one of the things I didn't like about this is see how it's going this way. Uh, hang on, wrong tool. See how it's going this way? That's kind of annoying. I actually want it to go this way, even though it's uh, like loss of profit. So, the way you do that is you can just do a shelf calculation up here by going absolute. Okay. So you just write it up as absolute and then put sum of profit inside and that'll flip the whole thing. There you have it. Now we want the largest one at the very top. So we use this button right here. Okay. So now we're going to clean it up and get rid of the stuff we don't need. So this axis, don't need it. The label up here, don't need it. Grid lines, we don't need it. Okay. And it's basically just less for them to process. So now we go here, and then also we'll change the color. Red. Okay, there we go. Now if we go to dashboard two. Let's bring that in there. 
uh, worst products, and I think I put it about somewhere there. Okay, something like that. Now, is that what I had for this one? And actually, I just noticed in the other one, I didn't even have the top value. So this, we don't actually need. Oops, delete. Okay, all I added was a label for the top and bottom. So let me show you how I did that. So here in the label, if we duplicate state into label, it's going to show up for everything, but we only want it for the minimum and maximum value. So the two values at the end. Okay, now you're going to get this problem where it's trying to show something else. And the reason is because of this, this field right here. So in some cases, very rarely, it tries to use a different field than what you're displaying, right? We want to actually, we want to use sum of profit. So when you get here, yeah, didn't do it. You go sum of profit. There you have it, and now it's there. I also want this label to be inside. I don't want it sticking out like that. So here on the label, we're just going to go alignment, center, center. That's it. So now it's inside. Okay, let's go dashboard two. So now we have kind of the rough placing of our dashboard. Now we're going to add in the themes and the style and the color. And let me show you how I did that. Now you can go on Google and just copy paste an image. That's one way to do it. What I actually did was I went on, because I've just been loving this recently. I've been using Mid Journey AI to just build me some really, really cool uh, wallpapers and stuff. So I got them to, I got it to do this one, which was like a dreary, sad kind of Texas back roads, right, as the background. And then I used Adobe Express. Let me find it. Where's my Adobe Express? Uh, da, 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 da. Is it this one? Okay. Let me find it. Okay. And then I use this for the text. Now, you don't have to do this. You could literally do this in Microsoft Excel, right? You could do it anywhere. But I just prefer using Adobe Express for just some fancy titles. Now, you see here it says the not-so-great state of Texas. It's much better than summary. Okay, because now you've said something, okay, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so those two images, let's bring them in and see how it looks. So first image is the title, which is this one, center, okay. And then that means we don't need this one anymore. And then let's bring in the wallpaper. Now, I believe it is this one. Okay, and there we have, is it that one? Just make sure. Yep, it is that one. Okay, so now we want to place this in the right spots. There you have it, somewhere like that. And then this one, the trick to doing it is just remember what this is. So fifteen fifty nine hundred. So we're going to set this to fifteen fifty nine hundred. Now you can make it a tile and just put it in the back, but I I find that really annoying. Because every time you try and click something else, you end up clicking the background, and it just gets annoying. And then here for the X and Y position, it's just 0 and 0. Okay. Now, <laughs> I ended up doing it for the bloody title. Hang on. <laughs> All right. That's what happens when you do it live, people. Okay. So here we're going to go 0, 0. And this one has to be... Did I just do that again? That is so annoying. Hang on. Why is it not letting me do that? Okay. There we go. There we go. So 1550, 900. Okay, that's going to take up the whole thing. And then we want to go here in floating order and go send to back. All right. Now, you're going to have this white for these um, sheets. So you just want to click on the white and go format. Click on, let me get my drawing tool. Click on the paint bucket, sheet, and then here on worksheet, just set it to no color. So none. Okay, and then here we do the same thing, format, paint can, sheet, worksheet, none. Now, you'll notice it's a bit hard to read, so we still need to make the text all white. And the easiest way to do that is if you go to format, workbook, and set this first one to white. Okay, so now you can see it a little bit better. The actual axis is not too bad. It's not taking up too much attention. This one's about here. Let's make the writing red. Okay, I want some differentiation between the keywords, so let's get rid of oops, the bolding on these. Okay, something like that. 
And I can't remember if I had bolding on the other one. Oh, yes, that's what I did. So just to differentiate, we made this white. Okay, so you can see Texas and minus 26 is there. Now for this one, see how it kind of fades, especially when you have some white and gray in the background. So a neat trick to that is if you go to this sheet and you go layout, you go background, go black, right? You're going to get that. And then just reduce the opacity so you can still see behind it. So it's not so solid if I do this, right? It's too solid. It's too solid, right? So here you just want to reduce this enough that you can still read it, but not so much that you notice it. That's, it's a delicate balance, right? So you end up with something like this. Now that didn't take us too long and I'm exp I'm explaining it. So once you get really, really good at this, you'll be able to build these kinds of style dashboards really super quickly. Again, I teach this all on my website. So if you want to check that out, that is on, let me bring it, that is on jellymaneducation.thinkific.com. And specifically, if you want to know where a lot of the dashboard element stuff is taught. So in Tableau bundle, if you go to expert, and you head down to section, uh, so much content here, it's crazy. Um, here in dashboard elements, right? This goes through all the elements of dashboard design and how to place things, right? And how to shape them, how to control it. So if you're struggling with that, it's all in there and there's even more. Yeah, there's just crazy amount of stuff. So anything you need to learn Tableau, it's all in here. So that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you at the next video. Bye.